Welcome. It's the Long Coat Mafia, the Internet's most hated and mafia-themed geek podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Internet's most hated mafia-themed geek podcast. The Long Coat Mafia podcast is I, the Reverend Godfather, the show's main host and frontman, and I hope you enjoyed the new intro that is premiering this week. I figure it's the perfect time to premiere it because Daniel Benoit is our special guest this week through Skype. Now, uh, not only is Daniel Benoit a Bigfoot researcher, uh, he is also the key founding member of the ECBRO, which stands for the East Coast Bigfoot Researchers Organization. And he he is on this week to talk about um, researching uh, Bigfoot, uh, his stance on on Bigfoot, uh, what he thinks. Uh, I, I'm pretty much in this call, uh, uh, open-minded, as always, an open-minded skeptic. Uh, so I'm going to get right down to it and keep this intro short. I hope you enjoy the Skype call, and let's get right into that call now. And uh, folks, uh, as you heard from the introductions, we have Daniel Benoit. Am I pronouncing that right? Absolutely. Okay, and... As stated, Daniel Benoit is the key founder of the ECBRO, uh, which is, again, the East Coast Bigfoot Researchers Organization. Uh, that's right. We, I know some of you out there are probably uh, cringing on the fact that we're covering someone who is researching Bigfoot, but um, on my end, uh, it, I find it interesting. Uh, Daniel, I am an open-minded uh, skeptic. I'm letting you th th you know now, instead of pre-show, that this is I am that, and I am intrigued. Uh, I'm not going to be that type of person to kind of say this does not exist or anything like that. Uh, I'm having you on with a open mind, if you don't mind that. Absolutely. Uh, so uh, I'm going to let you start off by. Um, Filling us in for those who've been uh, kind of living on a, under a rock and don't know <laughs> what Bigfoot in essence is. Can you kind of give us the standard definition or description of what Bigfoot is? Well, most commonly known uh, or described as, I should say, is the large, hairy, bipedal humanoid looking creature uh sometimes uh, uh, well, most commonly also believed to be the half man half ape um uh, type creature that you know that ex exists in folklore uh to only so many people um you know there's all kinds of uh, i mean gorillas were once considered a part of folklore because they were officially discovered many many years ago um because there was rumors about the beast and till actually the, the discovery was actually officially made so yeah sasquatch um there's a long history uh, and even for today's viewers there's a history that dates back way before they were born history before any of our existences ever came about there's a history that dates back pre-columbus times he just and that's just for the united states of america you know that's not including other countries and continents so yes uh, oh. <laughs> to stay for the listeners uh uh here in the states it's usually it, it goes by several names here in the states uh bigfoot is the most known uh i think skunk cake is another mm -hmm. um i know uh, in asia it's cause also known as yeti um it's roughly the same fits the same description as you stated and to add to your case uh about a little more than 100 years ago the panda was also the same way it was i i think you're you don't really like the term it was considered a cryptid it it was a, a matter of legend uh, in regards to the panda and oh yeah uh until it was discovered by researchers uh uh, wandering around in Asia and finding this this mythical, in essence, mythical beast, as you said, with gorillas. Uh, again, here's a what would be considered a cryptid to come to light because they found it, and 
looking into this on my own, there is seems to be a large portion of uh, the world as it is that is uh, not yet explored or untouched by man, if you will. Oh, yes, absolutely. That, that was actually a great point you brought up, Tom, with the Big Panda. Uh, the other one, too, uh, a lot of people um, forgot was the discovery of the giant squid as well. Correct. Um, talking about squids is all as big as uh, you know U ships, uh, the U boats, and World War Two, and so forth, and you know, um, or, or or what do you call the other one, like the, um, the submarine? You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so you know, and so yeah, there's all kinds of mysteries out there. There's all kinds of rumors, and and, and you know, and all related. Everything got put on folklore, you know, but. Um, I will be honest with you. I look at things in a, a, a very objective view myself uh, with a lot of different cryptids. However, I do believe in the possibility of a couple others. And when it comes to Bigfoot, I will state that I am not just a believer, but I am a knower. I just wanted to clarify that for the, uh, for the listeners. So, <laughs> uh, and we'll get into how uh, I won't say you're, it's kind of even though this is an audio program, it, it's kind of tough to relate uh, or to give evidence uh, what little there is in regards to uh, how you know that this creature does exist. Uh, there, I might say there has been uh, a various amount of castings uh, if that's the proper word of this creature's uh, feet uh, some I've heard ranges from maybe a size 13 what would be a size 13 foot all the way up to what uh, size 18 19 yeah Is there larger? Uh, there's been a couple that had come forward and said they've gotten up to 22 23 inches um, but 18. 19 inch tracks those are those are more uh yeah they're they're more common uh well i shouldn't say common but they're more within the accurate range um but now yeah i've got i've actually got my own collection of tracks uh throughout the years and exactly what you just stated they range from anywhere from around 13 inches and mine go up to 16 i do have one or maybe yeah maybe one or two um, that were about the 18 inch range. Um, so yeah, I can't see them. I mean, there's a possibility I haven't seen them, but I know there's others that come forward and said, yeah, they go up to the boat. They've gotten 23, you know, inch tracks or so. Um, so, I mean, you know, we're looking, you know, something a size track that tall, you're looking at le easily t probably a 12, a 10 to 12 foot, uh, giant. Um, and I know that sounds very, far-fetched which i don't when it comes to sizes and everything that's a whole different story because people you know when i share my opinion about the sizes versus compared to what i gather from my witness descriptions uh people have throw a fit when i talk about um you know my scientific um outlook on that you know when it comes to the average height that's reported and everyone's saying, well, they're bigger than that. Well, they very well may be. I just have not seen that for myself or, you know, but other people have reported it, so I will not rule it out. <laughs> now, um, in your experience, uh, do you find that there is more people uh, disbelieving in Bigfoot, meaning that when it comes to uh, the, I don't want to put it in the realm of paranormal, but uh, let's say the realm of, for the sake of a lack of a better world, the unusual, uh, that most people, when they say, okay, do you believe in ghosts? Yeah, sure, uh, it's not really confirmed yet. Uh, how about UFOs? Yeah, sure, I can, uh, I could get that. We can't be the only ones around. But when they somebody brings up something like Bigfoot, nah, that doesn't exist. It's got to be a bear. It's got to be maybe, uh, as you said, a, uh, an ape or an orangutan. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, that's the thing. <sighs> and... The way I, I look at this and I point it out all the time, well, for for example, yeah, a lot of people, for, you know, they're familiar with basic known species, you know, like bears, deer, you know, so forth. The most common known animals, and plus what we do get to see and visit when we go to the zoos. But overall, you know, if you do a survey, you'll be surprised at, you know, adults today you know and, and the, the youth growing up the lack of awareness of what is known 
what the, what little they know about what is known for you know never mind the unknown which i refer to bigfoot as the unknown there's so many people that are lacking information and knowledge uh when it comes to what is known so yeah how are they gonna you know how could anyone that's unfamiliar on how to identify a, a track of an un, uh, of a known species even consider the possibility of an uh of an unknown such as bigfoot well that's why i preach the awareness i love spreading awareness about wildlife because independently i study and research wildlife and you know and for the very fact why that people need to understand and know about wildlife um, <clears throat> i mean again if yeah if you're gonna if you're gonna even consider looking for something like bigfoot yeah if you don't know how to identify a known species um yeah forget about looking or anything else because there's a reason why you know i state the, uh, the i make that statement in order to uh, find the unknown you have to know what is known okay, that way uh, hate oh i'm to sorry interrupt, would, would you say if someone went to uh let's say go hiking be aware of uh bigfoot or begin to uh, keep an eye out for bigfoot what should they uh start looking for or be aware of well there's a number of things um you know even non-believers became knowers over a period of time while well, either by either seeing or experiencing something out there for themselves for example you could be hiking down a trail not expecting nothing at all um either you might notice this large humanoid by you know this track that looks like a big giant human foot track or you might be wondering you know you might start getting rocks thrown at you and you're gonna think there's somebody hiding in the bushes deep in the woods you're gonna think someone's playing games with you and uh you know my, meanwhile you're gonna be yelling out or you're gonna start you're either gonna start freaking out or you're gonna get mad because you, you know, again you're gonna think somebody's playing games with you but uh, <laughs> uh, so you're either gonna investigate it, you get too close, and you hear something growl at you, and probably scare the, you know the skin off your you know off your bones, and make you just hightail out of there. But um, but as far as you know, if you're looking out there, if you're if you're actually trying to look for the subject, um, then you have a better chance of making the discovery as far as finding evidence um because you know for example i i've spoken to a lot of hikers hunters especially and uh i love speaking to hunt, uh, uh, bear hunters to be exact and i've interviewed a few in my in, in my time and uh <clears throat> you know and, and i've actually had some come forward after sharing the information that i you know in re regards of what i do and it's like well i'm out there all the time i grew up in the woods here i've never seen anything such as you know anything such as that i don't see how they could exist because i've never seen them well you know you, just, you don't have to see one to believe um uh, which that's i know that's sad to say but you know and it's quite the opposite of uh you know seeing they say seeing is believing but uh, true yeah you mentioned that uh you might someone might hear a growl again i'm i i want to be a skeptic here uh what makes me think that when you said that, it's like, all right, I'm hiking in the woods. I might know a bear tends to growl in it upon itself. Uh, so mm -hmm. do, uh, uh, like, mountain lions or the whatnot, uh, just, or a panther, depending on where, where your location, or some large cat that might, or a, uh, a wolf or a dog that might growl at, at you as a, a, a warning and someone like my myself saying oh that might be just a bear that wants me just to move along and not consider it as a a bigfoot well as far as bears um now if we're if we're looking or thinking about like here in virginia in most of the east coast um you know in west virginia whatever it is it's most commonly to have we have the black bear and uh black bear is one species i pay a lot of special attention to i do a lot of studies and research on them black bears are not going to stand around and hang around and growl at you you know if they're within the area and they smell you something you might hear a huff you might hear a grunt that's about it but when you when you're approaching or invading a black bear's area now they're gonna they're gonna get out of dodge they're very shy they're they they're also elusive on the most part they do not want no human interaction um 
Now, unless they have uh, cubs, if it's a mama bear with cubs, and she has, she can't get those cubs to go out of there. She's going to stay and defend those cubs. So then you might have an issue. But back to what I was saying, as far as if you're approaching an area and you start getting rocks thrown at you, and then you might start hearing, it's not common the way you might get a growl, but uh, from a Sasquatch, because a lot of times they're usually throwing the rocks to intimidate you to get out of there because they don't want you to approach in their territory. They don't, they don't want to be seen, you know, they're, you know, they're trying to remain hidden. They're, they're, you know, that's how they survive. You know, that's how that's part of their survival skills. Because, you know, think about that. If they reveal themselves to too many people, then you're going to have mobs going to hunt them down. You know, and then it, it could get out of hand. And uh, so, um, yeah, so, between the ro rock throws uh, and, you know, stuff like that, uh, you might also experience, in, which, uh, you know, to a, non to a skeptic or non-believer, hearing the sound of wood on wood being banged in out in the middle of the woods. You know, for one of the things you're going to think, oh, woodpecker or a tree, you know, tree swaying and hitting to another tree. Those are going to be your most common thoughts when you hear bang, you know, or a, a loud knock, you know. And uh, a lot of people or don't like, realize. Meaning like a tree fall, a piece of a tree, dead tree falling and hitting other trees nearby. Right, exactly. Those are going to be your most common thoughts to, when you hear knocks. Um,. Because what people don't realize, I've gotten actually quite a few responses from tree knocks. And if you knock on a, on a tree and you get responses of a knock back in other locations around you, I mean, what's the chances of trees and limbs falling out of uh, out of the trees, you know, while you're doing a tree knock on one tree? Um, you know, to get a response, yeah, I believe it's pretty safe to say you can rule those kind of things out, <laughs> yeah. um, especially when they're late at night, you know. So, considering uh, today's age, uh, with everybody pretty much having at least one camera on themselves at all times, meaning with cell phones and the popularity and the affordability of uh, cameras, uh, mm -hmm. why haven't we, in your opinion, why haven't we caught this creature on film uh, sooner or? for the lack of a better term, because I, it, I granted, I'm going to give you the aspect of, or the argument, uh, there have been uh, loads and loads of fakes out there, but it only takes one verifiable uh, footage to prove the exception to the rule, if you can understand what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, we got to consider... <laughs> We got a lot of amateurs, uh, you know, everybody that's involved in the Bigfoot research, I myself included. Um, you know, if we have to look at ourselves, seriously, we need to compare ourselves to scientific researchers, uh, real biologists, and so forth. Um, unlike me, I mean, I study and research a lot of the, you know, different forms of biology and primatology myself, you know. But, again, we need to consider ourselves as amateurs that's just going out into the woods to explore, to find other signs, and, and maybe make that discovery. However, again, we're amateurs. Yeah, we got cell phones. I always try to carry two devices on me. When I go out into the woods to explore, I carry my camcorder. Uh, I got a real nice camcorder uh, on a you know adjustable tripod. And then I got my cell phone I always keep with me. And... Um, you know, I use my my cell phone mainly for pictures and, of course, a camcorder for doing the filming. And because um, I do a lot of documentary, I do a lot of document, uh, you know, I film uh, while I'm out there, what I'm looking for, what I'm actually finding and, and talk and explain about it. So, but yeah, um, we should always, if you're going to be out in the woods, specifically looking or searching for the subject, um, yeah, you always want to keep a camera with you because you might come across something that that might blow your mind. Um, you know, and one thing I like to say real quick is the rule out hoaxing. I never mentioned, well, I, I shouldn't say never, but um, I try not to mention when I'm going, especially where I'm going. Um, cause when I get out to the woods, I, I could go for miles deep in the woods, hiking and exploring. And, um, and I feel that, you know, Hey, why is somebody going to be five miles out in the woods hoaxing these tracks? They look pretty fresh, you know, and I'm just throwing this out there. But um, 
So, um, you know, and then uh, you've got a camera with you, you'll, you'll be able to document that um, unless you carry plaster with you, which I do and I don't because plaster, man, that could be, it depends how much you carry with you in a backpack. It's a lot of weight. I try to, I try to pack light when I go hiking, but, um, so yeah, we have a lot of these amateurs out in the woods and I'll tell you the number one problem that where people go out there filming, um, they're filming the woods and they're zooming in. And what they do when they zoom in their camera, they don't know how to use their, uh, their equipment because their, their images become distorted. And, and what they do, they take these fi- pictures and they look at these pictures. And it's like, man, I got Bigfoot on my camera, on my film. And again, that's where pareidolia comes in there, you know, because people, they crop these blurry images and they're already zoomed in too far to begin with out of focus um you know so yeah there's a lot of a lot of what we see out there is really junk uh, i'll be honest with you, it is junk and then the ones that actually show a figure walking and is still blurry in my opinion they're let's just cast them out and rule them out because in my opinion if they you know if they were something real and somebody was bragging about it and wanted credit for it because a lot of these people that post these photos, oh, I don't want to be known. I don't want to be, you know, they're afraid of getting ridiculed. Of course, because they're they're posting pictures of somebody in a suit and they blur the the whole video up because they do not want to see, you know, or they don't want it revealed as as an actual hoax that it really is. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't mean to interrupt. There, there's been times I've seen like uh, videos on YouTube and they as you said they they'll post up a photo saying all right in this uh particular image it could be somewhat of a clear photo but the photo is so dense with trees they could say there's a bigfoot in this photo and i'm standing there like where i don't see all i see is a bunch of trees so oh yeah oh yeah i'll tell you i'm right there with you chris uh i'll tell you what there's there's so many. Uh, I I know it's very common on social media too. I mean, and and that's what makes it hard for those of us who are out there taking it serious. Um, and then you got these people out there posting these pictures, and yeah, because there's there's dark shadows that hide in the in the pictures, you know, from in the in the combination of stumps, shadows, and the mixed foliage in, in the scenery of the forest when you're taking these pictures. And you'll be surprised what the stupidest things I've seen that people call Bigfoot. And I was like, no, because Bigfoot's so much on their mind, any little dark spot or circle or blur, it's Sasquatch to them. And they're happy knowing, you know, in their imagination, in their fantasy world, they're content knowing that's Bigfoot to them. Uh, Meanwhile, um, people like me, I want to see a new Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin footage from 1967 take place. I was going to ask you your thoughts on, <laughs> the, the, in essence, the infamous original footage that came out way back in the day. So, Oh, yeah. Well, uh, you know, to clarify that, I do believe that is um, the real deal. I believe that is very legit and authentic. Um, for the very fact that, you know, there's been so many experts that it died, you know, that that has um, dissected that video, analyzed it to the fullest extent. Um, they've even tried to replicate the actual, um, the gait, the movement, and everything related to, uh, on that subject. And nowhere could they come anywhere close to replicating the very actual walk. Because um, think about it, if that was somebody in a suit, would they have been walking so smoothly across that uh, rough terrain? Uh, when I say rough terrain, that was actually a dried up riverbed with ridges and uh, you know ridge lines from the you know the sandbars and everything in there, and not to mention the down tr- trees and the debris that was there at the time. The, this subject was walking smoothly and was well aware of its surroundings. Um, again, uh, Mr. Bill Munns, graphic analyst. Man, dissected the heck out of that. And now, uh, I know that there's, there's been again. Sorry to interrupt. There, there's oh, been no, many you're fine. people that have come out on both sides that said the uh, original filmers have came out to fake this, and others have said no that they haven't. Um, what What do you think there is that uh, I won't say discrepancy, but that argument? 
Um, well, to be honest with you, I know Roger Patterson, um, which was one of the eyewitnesses there at the event. And of course, um, just a f only so many years, just a few years later, after this event took place, he had passed away. Um, and then, you know, as far as there's a lot of little details I'm not going to try to get into or recall or try to remember, but um, there was speculation uh, or rumors that a Mr. Bob Hieronymus Her uh, that was inside the suit. Um, but the thing is, there was no uh, no suit ever came forward. And nothing was ever proven about that. It was all speculation and rumors. Um, there was supposedly a money deal involved where, like, you know, blah, blah, blah. Money was supposed to be given to this person for this, and maybe more money was given to that person to shut up. And, you know, so there, yeah, there was a lot that we don't know, you know, as far as the dra dramatic scene of that or the side of that story. Um, and then, till this day, there's people, um, they, they'll, they'll get a few random photos um, that's associated with the actual Bluff Creek location. Um, and they try to stir up all other stories and everything with that, and now she, and making it look like a, a whole different situation took place there. When the only living witness till this day is Mr. Bob Gimlin. He is you know in his mid to upper eighties, and he's the only one that's alive that was there then. And but meanwhile, we got people trying to make up uh, other stories and information about that site, but. Well, um, but yeah, overall, my opinion about the subject, I mean, unless something does come up, which, uh, I mean, if it is fake, it's a, it's a damn good fake. It's a real good fake. I'll tell you what, because again, it's got the professionals and the experts fooled. Um, yeah, and not, kinda, and not to mention, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, nope. No, um, I do apologize for apologize for that speaking of, of fakes uh with so many uh documentaries either on hulu and netflix uh i i can name a name i think you brought up the one person in a live stream of a, maybe two weeks ago um if you don't want to mention names you don't have to let me put it like that how do i know what i'm seeing on tv because in the one documentary he showed several images of faces that he he let me just put it like this he allegedly claimed he got while doing his expeditions uh in the woods how do i know uh, that someone like him hasn't faked that uh i know exactly who you're talking about from um up in uh canada right i um, believe so what maybe the washington area canada yeah um well since I know who you're speaking of, um, I am uh, going like to. Like I said, yeah, we don't have to call people out if you don't want. That's why I, I try right. to uh, word it that way. Well, the only reason I say, well, I, we, we do mention his name. Um, you know, we do bring up the name on our podcast show, but um, on YouTube. However, uh, <laughs> um, I just I know he he's been the type to want to sue people and gain more money, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, as far as what he puts out there, I, he yeah, he's got a really. Uh, I watch it. I was actually pretty. I thought it was impressive. Um, as far as his Netflix uh, documentary film that he put out there, I was I was actually uh, impressed by the. It had me on. You know, it was entertaining. I could say that much. It was entertaining. Um, but here comes the downfall to everything he's ever done or put out there. His wife, or I believe it's his wife. Uh, his wife or his sister, or one of the two, is one of the two. I'm pretty sure it's his wife. Is a makeup film artist for Hollywood. So, you be the judge. <laughs> <laughs> so we have this. We, in essence, we have someone who knows somebody who can recreate uh, something along the lines of, to use the popular reference, Harry in the Hendersons, and. Ha go out into the woods and stumble upon this uh, alleged creature in a way. And yeah. I do apologize for using Harry and the Hendersons, but it's the most popular pop culture reference I could think of. Uh, Absolutely. So, uh, in order to maybe gain views or gain notoriety, uh, I'm not saying he that's why he does this, but uh, there has been many times that I could recall listening to a program such as Coast to Coast, uh, and they come out and say, hey, 
this organization, this person uh, has found a uh, alleged Bigfoot body only three weeks later or a few days later, uh, it comes out that that particular body is just a uh, a suit, a Bigfoot suit stuffed with maybe roadkill. Oh, yeah, that, yeah, the way you, what you just described, I'm familiar with that one there. Um, yeah, a whole different yeah, subject. I, I just used it as a reference point. I'm sure there has been other uh, alleged hoaxes that are out there that have done something similar. Well, as far as the one individual we're referring to from Canada and, you know, his sister or wife being the uh, uh, Hollywood film artist, uh, makeup artist, um, I, I will say this. I don't. I mean, he's if he is trying to pull a a hoax, uh, if he is trying to pull a hoax on everybody in general, well, um, a hoax is one thing, but I don't see him grasping for funds because I mean he's gone to the extreme where he's gone to court to try to prove the existence because one of the things he claimed to have DNA of, you know, of coming back as some kind of unknown primate, blah, blah, blah. He had, supposedly, he had paperwork. He had documentation. But it got thrown out in court. So, I mean, it couldn't have been that good of information. Um, you know, because he was going to court to prove the existence of Sasquatch. And, um, you know, it... <sighs> I'm sorry, especially with, I don't know. I mean, there's a part of me that wants to believe, but I just looking at, yeah, I mean, when I say there's a part of me that wants to believe, I'm talking about with his stuff, because I mean, the guy is, he's been labeled the hoaxer in the past. So how could you really give anybody, you know, you want to give somebody the benefit of the doubt, but at the same time, you don't even want to bother. So yeah. that's how I look at it. I mean, and I watching his uh, his documentary Netflix film, as far as I find, like I said, I, I found that highly entertaining, but so, I can't take it serious, even though there's a small percentage of me that really wants to. <laughs> now, so, uh, with kind of using something like that, I, I, whether, uh, again, being that open minded skeptic, uh, you hear a lot about, or someone like myself hears a lot, or when they see the Netflix special uh, that is. Or one of the many Netflix documentaries that ha that pertains to Bigfoot, it's, he's not just the only one. There are others, and they state about uh, trees uh, being uh, torn down or broken in half. Uh, what is this phenomenon? How it, it seems like, especially when you go through a woods or you hike, the some of these trees seem to be taken down with natural causes how do mm -hmm. uh, why as a skeptic uh please inform me uh of why you might think that this is correlated to a a creature known as the bigfoot well this is a good top this is a good question right here because you know i've been in several discussions with this and I, again as a knower as a bigfoot knower i am also very objective and i look at things very logical and very critical um and another thing, too, and a lot of people that are big-time believers uh, or knowers themselves, but yet go in the woods and see every little broken stamp limb or tw twig that wants to point it out and say that's Bigfoot-related, I mean, shame on them. I mean, we sh the thing is, a lot of people don't believe in taking things, uh, you know, in an objective or scientific approach. Me, I do at all costs. I try my best. I'm not no scientist. I don't have a degree in anything, but I am self-taught in, in a few different st subjects. But then when it comes to common sense and then the touch of being objective uh, and looking at things and being critical about everything, I could tell you a, the cause of almost a majority of every broken tree and what caused it, what did it to every animal that does it. Um, I mean, because... A lot of small saplings, the little trees that get broken, twisted. You got your deer that rub their antlers that, or that that could be brushing by, snapping twig. Bears, bears are your number one main suspect in the woods for a lot of broken trees, snap trees. Um, you know, you'll you'll see a pine sapling with tree uh, with their you know the limbs snap going straight down. It's usually a bear climbing or playing around on it, um, rubbing her backs up against it. 
Um, a lot of your big bent over bowed trees. A lot of people like associating that with Sasquatch. Um, well, for example, a lot of these bowed trees, due to the weight of snow and ice over a period of time, stretching the fibers of the tree. Uh, if it's been stretched and laid that way for a while, those those fibers will stay that way. Um, another cause or you know reason behind other bow trees is because over a period of time so a lot of trees like to bend and stretch and reach for the sunlight uh you know people don't think about those kind of things um and not to mention again back to what i said bears bears will climb a tree and they'll climb up a small tree go so far up and then if it's any if it's a bear of any weight their body will bring over you know that tree starts swaying around, and then th their weight starts taking over. And next, you know that tree is being yanked all the way down to the ground. And now, that uh, bear, to, even though, uh, again, sorry to interrupt, but to kind of validate your point in regards to bears, though we have the black bear here on the east coast, uh, uh -huh. in the northern uh, west coast, in like Oregon, Northern California, and Washington, they have the grizzly. Those are oh, not yeah. small bears. Those those bears are. A, a good 12 feet tall and they mark trees using their claws oh so yeah the, you have to keep that for those of you on the uh, on the west coast have to keep that in mind even though we're talking about something that happens primarily on the east coast as well so yeah um yeah i'll tell you what the black bears it's not often that you see it but they do too uh, a black bear will mark their territory in uh, various ways um but as far as a, a grizzly will uh, have claw marks on a tree, black bears here, I've seen it myself, both here in Virginia and down in Tennessee, um, they'll have claw marks on a tree. Um, but it's, it's actually rare to see that. And that's another thing I get off the, off the, from other Bigfoot believers, because a lot of Bigfoot believers and others within the Bigfoot community, they like to argue with each other, which is very pitiful, because they want to be the ones that are right. They don't want to look at. They want to. They want to point fingers and say, "Yeah, well, I'm the best Bigfoot out there," and what I'm saying is right. Well, they don't want to look at things in a scientific view. They don't want to be objective. They want. They don't that want to look at things question, that are responsible. What is the, what is the common <laughs> disagreements in the Bigfoot community? Oh, it's. I don't even know where to start, Chris. <laughs> uh, you know, if you want, just list like one or two to let the listeners know. Well, the major disagreement is, which it shouldn't be, there shouldn't be no disagreements in the Bigfoot community. Well, no, that's wrong. Uh, that's I didn't mean to word it that way. Thing is, people, if you if if you're disagreed with, uh, the main thing is it should be respected and left alone. And in most cases, it should be okay. Let's agree to disagree. But you have certain others that will disagree with you and that will actually have this ego a blown out of i mean they're blown up ego so well, i'm gonna attack this guy i'm gonna blow him up on every podcast show every facebook live i do and bash him because he doesn't know what you know from, uh, his ass from you know from faith you know stuff like that so it there is, is again yeah. sorry to interrupt it is that uh from what I, reports that I've heard, is that why you, again, you don't have to answer, just let me know if you don't want to answer. Is that why you got kicked out of, of one of the Facebook group, Bigfoot groups? Uh, I don't know what group that would have been. <laughs> <laughs> so there's um, more than one. <laughs> again, you don't have to go into it. That what, there was, so there was more than one. I, I'm in a lot of groups. I don't even know which ones I'm in because I get ad, people add me to these groups. I, okay. I, and I only post to them to share my links and information. I have I have my groups that I pay attention to. Uh, okay. No one's kicked me out of my own groups. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I, I, like I said I, it's just that I heard you know, rumors, and I uh, I didn't want to step on toes. So that's that's why I kind of, I'm trying to at least inquire. <laughs> right. Really inquire. Um, so. Um, what what have you mentioned that you had a few of your own experiences with the if you will this creature this unknown creature what 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 have they been, what were they well uh my first major experience happened in 2014 um and to be honest with you i was not alone um it was during a camping trip 
uh, a little camping expedition. And there were six of us total. And uh, this is uh, actually the exact date. I'll never forget. It was May 3rd of 2014. And uh, it was a great time. Um, just totally unexpected. Um, but that day, May 3rd, we you know we had all gathered together and decided to go on a hike and uh we marched our way down we were about a good mile down from the uh from the lake so we decided let's go down to the lake and uh good thing there wasn't nobody there because you know usually people go there to trout fish in, at the lake well we uh since there was nobody there we had six of us and we decided hey l- all right let's spread out we all had radio communication let's spread out and blah 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 and, um you know, and we you know we sprayed uh, spread out. We had parabolic mics. Uh, we gave off vocalizations to you know see if we could trigger responses, and we did get a response back out of uh, uh, Kimmy, uh, Mrs. Kimmy Disorder that was with us. Uh, her and her husband, um, they had given off uh, vocalization, and uh, about ten seconds or so later, we got it was. I want to say it was. Oh, it wasn't similar to what they did. You know, her her tone was like you know, if if you could picture a woman's tone giving a howl, um, versus this tone that got returned back or after ten seconds was like pretty bassy. But uh, at the same time, you could tell it was somewhat distant. But we all heard it, so I thought that was very fascinating. Um, but it wasn't until after we had after hanging out and it started to get dark. Um, yeah, it was already dark. We were down there for quite a while, and uh, we all regrouped. And like I said, we had a mile hike back to our back to our camp, and we were hiking back to camp, going up the forest road after leaving the lake. Uh, and we're kind of all stand, uh, walking in a single file line, and um, you know we're talking, you know, at normal tone, and looking, you know, I'm actually up ahead of everybody. I'm kind of like leading the 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 line and but you know you hear everybody talking to amongst themselves and blah 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 and uh you know as we're walking out you know we spotted some eye shine of a you know it's like, oh, that's got to be a deer you know so yeah we seen a couple deer on the one side of the road and um and then one of the things that happened after seeing the deer i'm something got my attention and i'm looking at it i was like what the heck is that and keep in mind, inside where this is, this happened in the National Forest. And in the National Forest, you have these little yellow uh, signs that are, you know, attached to trees, every, you know, in you know, certain places. And uh, usually they say no no uh, vehicles beyond this point, et cetera, et cetera. Well, at first I thought my headlamp was reflecting off of something until it, came, until my, it became more in focus as I got a little closer. To come to realize there was actually a set of eyes staring at me. And because for my position, looking at what I was looking at, I seen these two large yellowish looking amber eyes blink at me. And that's when I started to get a little nervous because, again, the eye shine that I was looking at was sitting low, somewhat low for me. And it was probably over 30, 25 to 30 feet from me. And when I seen that, I turned around and called my buddy Tracy. Tracy was the next one that was behind me. And he came up and he's staring at it. He's seeing it too for, uh, you know, himself. And then whatever this was kind of disappeared. It's like turned off. We didn't see the body, but you can see that it disappeared and went off. And Tracy yelled out to the rest of the group, guys, get up here. We got eye shine. We got eye shine. And, and I keep in mind, it was unidentified at the time. We didn't know what the heck we were looking at. So we all regroup and we get up to this little spot and also we're looking down into the woods. Now, this is where we learned why it was sitting low because off the edge of the forest road, the ground sloped off. It dropped down several feet until it leveled back out. So we're all in this area. We're looking into the, you know, into the woods, it's pitch dark, even with all the headlamps on, whatever that was with yellow you know, eyes, well, we spotted it again and it's, regardless of how low it was sitting, it, you could tell it, whatever it was was short. But it was doing this crazy side to side swaying motion, and I'm like, "What in the world is that?" And it, you know, for the longest time, seeing it si- sway side to side didn't dawn on me till after a while. I was like, "You know, that's something chimpanzees and gorillas do." 
You know, I was like, huh. And then, we, you know, we all take notice of that one. And then minutes later, after we all took notice of that, we noticed another one about four or five feet over to the right of that one. And we noticed it was way taller than that short one. That short one, we estimated, was, had been at least four feet, four, uh, at least four feet tall. And when we're noticing the other subject, same color eye shine, but yet keep in mind, we're still not seeing no body shape or nothing. We're just seeing eye shine. Our headlamps, that's all our headlamps was doing is picking up eye shine. But um, it was very obvious that this next subject was towering over the four foot one at least by two feet and so we, we easily had a four foot and a six foot subject of something here and we noticed there was blinking of the eyes on that one there and keep in mind having the two subjects that we're looking at this went on for you know this observation had to go on for at least between three and five minutes till we saw the third one and what happened when we started noticing the third one, there was a set of bushes off to the right of, of the, um, the second one. And apparently, whatever we were looking at was very low, and it slowly worked its way up. Like it was crouched down, and it was going from a crouch position up to a standing position. And as it stood up, it was much taller than the six foot one when i say much taller i'm talking about at least another two feet so wait a minute then this is starting to get a little crazy it, it's at the same time it was getting exciting um and here we are we're seeing three different subjects and noticing that the tallest one was had the same color eye shine as the other two a little bit larger looking eye sockets which, you know, well, that's what we call them because of the yellow, uh, the bright yellow beams of the eyes were so large looking. Um, you know, one, I forget who it was. It was somebody with us. Uh, oh, it might have been Tracy. Tracy was like, guys, I think we actually got squatches here. And I was like, I'm already in my mind, in the back of my mind, I'm already thinking that. Like, dude, could these be squatches? But the thing is, there was no way of telling whatsoever. There was no way of identifying what we were looking at. But this is where it got a little interesting is when my focus stayed on the biggest one. Because even though he was behind the bushes, his eyes were, you know, were just above the bushes. The bushes only sat about five feet tall. So, you know, you got another three feet from his chest up to his the top of his head. And he apparently, right when he took he took a whole complete turn and stepped one or two feet and turned back around and looked back at us. Now, when he did this, this is what confirmed it for me. This actually confirmed it for me because when he did that, that was actually when I made out a silhouette, a shape. I'm looking at where I'm talking about broad shoulders and a big round head. The head was very round and it sloped down where you could see the shoulders that was made out when he took a side movement and walked, uh, he made a step or two and then turned back aside. Somehow my hit, my headlamp hit it in the right you know, position to make out that shape. Not once did I ever see the shapes of the other two, but undeniably I saw the silhouette and the shape of the big one. And, um, you know, you know, during the whole situation, we're, we're you know, trying to trigger response. No, nobody's acting scared. We're actually very excited. Uh, a couple of the guys are acting goofy. You know, I mean, they're doing things to try to trigger a response. But the overall scene here is that these subjects are staring at us, you know. Um, and then they actually end up disappearing further into the darkness. They all, all three turned off and went away and went further into the pitch dark, you know. And so as they left, we left because um, we were pretty much blown away by what we were seeing. And yeah, we started talking about them being squatches. And by the time we got back to camp, we were trying to debunk everything. We were trying to think of every known animal that would exist in that area. And like, could have been this, could have been that. I said, no, I said, it had wide shoulders. I said, I seen the shape of it. And then the other thing that happened was me and Tracy Arnold 
we basically um, we basically kicked ourselves in the butt because me and him both had backpacks on, and in our backpacks we both had night vision. And get that you know we never not once thought of pulling out our night vision to have a good clear look. I mean, our night vision devices that we had wasn't the best quality, but it would have shown us a lot more than what we did see. I can guarantee you that. But being so caught up in that moment, you know, not sure really what is going on, you're, you know, experiencing this kind of strange, bizarre, you know, scenery here with three large yellow glowing eye shines. And, um, you know, then you see the silhouette of the biggest one. And you're like, oh, this is awesome. You know, this is cool. This is, and the thing is, I've always gotten activity. I've always heard weird things from that that area. Because in this same area, there's a, there's actually a camp spot right outside of um, right outside. Like as soon as you go past where we had our encounter, when you come back out to the other part of the forest road where it splits off, there's a camp spot right over there. It's a very big open camp spot. Um, which has actually been, you know, my main camp spot, for, you know, since then. I always try to camp there uh, if it's available. And uh, because those same woods right there where we had our encounter, um, we've had tree knocks, we've had uh, other vocalizations and all kinds of other, you know, other activity from there. Um, cause back in 2015, I was camping there. And uh, I I was by myself. It was during the hunting season. And I had my Chevy Blazer. I had a fire going. And I had a spotlight. For some reason, I knew there was nobody else camping in that area whatsoever. And uh, I'm totally alone in that whole part of the forest road. And for some reason, I just had the urge to grab this, um, the spotlight and walk out to the middle of the forest road. And when I walked out to the middle of the forest road, keep in mind, my spotlight was not turned on yet. I walked out to the road and and I'm standing in total darkness right now. Uh, well, right at that time. <laughs> and then then I started to turn on, the, you know, my spotlight. It's, a, you know, handheld, and I had a trigger. As soon as I pulled that trigger, started shining in the woods. You know, I started shining it from basically a 10 o'clock position. And slowly scanning it from my left to my right. Uh, right away, as soon as I hit the, sp uh, the spotlight into the woods... Um, even though I didn't see it, you could hear the sound. You could hear a deer take off. <laughs> uh, so a deer, you know, I, I was like, I spooked up a deer. Cool. You know, and here I am, I'm panning along. I'm coming past 12 o'clock, one o'clock. And as soon as I pass one o'clock before I hit two o'clock is what is what, uh, is when I heard what I heard next. Now, keep in mind again, I, this sometime I did not see nothing, but what I heard next being so close had my heart thumping up in my chest because I heard the steps of a very large, heavy bipedal being or subject that was just inside the tree line that I was not seeing. But apparently I spooked something that didn't know I was there and caught, apparently I caught him off guard, him or her, whatever it was. It was very heavy and it was on two feet. Because when I turn and my spotlight hit in that direction, the only thing you could hear was boom, 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 boom. Like when I, you know, the sound of each step had actually had a crunch to it. Because you could hear every step as whatever. Like if it stepped on a limb, you're hearing every crunch and thump as it stepped. And like I said, I heard all, when I was hearing this, I was walking backwards, you know, with my, you know, with my back facing camp. And with my key, my hand reaching down to my belt loop where my keys were, hitting uh, the panic button to unlock my uh, my vehicle, <laughs> just in case I had to run because my shotgun was, you know, back at, at the camp. You know, I didn't have it on me. I was only going to just, you know, I was only going off to more or less play around. I wasn't expecting something very large and heavy walk away from me like that. No, I can tell um, you, it wasn't a bear. I will tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> no, to kind of break away from things, uh, uh, in your research, uh, have or is Bigfoot, Sasquatch, um, call it as you will, uh, primarily a solo creature, or are there is it research coming out now that they're more uh, pack or family oriented? 
Well, you know, that's a very good question. Um, I do believe, you know, everybody has a different opinion on this, but I do believe as far as they exist in groups, but do they work in groups? Um, that's a, I believe that could be a very good possibility. I do believe they collaborate. I believe they do. They, they may work together for survival purposes, but you know, a number of witness reports always say they see one, you know, most of the time it's usually one at a time. Um, but the thing is, we don't know what they're doing when they're, you know, if they're crossing the road, where they get headed to, you know, um, I mean, I've heard of stories where people said they saw two at one time cross the road, you know, so I believe it all depends. Uh, I wish there was more information. There's no fact stating uh, either or because, you know, when it comes to Bigfoot, technically, technically, there is no facts. Uh, it's just basically uh, speculation on a lot of things in theory. Um, but I have reason to believe that they, you know, they do work in units, um, groups um, like like the encounter I just shared, you know, uh, of seeing the three, um, even though we didn't see physical features of the body, I like to believe that that was a possible family unit, uh, consistent of a young juvenile, um, a female, and a male. Uh, that being said, uh, it leads to the question, could this be the reason why uh, no one has really found a, a body of a Bigfoot yet? Oh, uh, yeah, that's a very good question. I love answering that question because um, we could go in several directions with that one. Um, do they, when, it, you know, when it comes to that, that that's a, well, for example, that raises another question. Are they, are they cannibalistic? Um, that could be a very strong possibility because even if we're relating Sasquatch or Bigfoot to our known primates, which a lot of them are... Uh, um, um, cannibalistic of of their own kind. Um, the other thing is too, um, just like bears. Uh, you know, a lot of people. You know, a lot of people ask, why don't we find the remains of a dead Sasquatch if they do exist? Well, for example, we know bears exist, but how often do you ever come across the remains of a dead one that has died of natural causes? Your percentage is probably zero to maybe point one percent. Um, yeah, because a lot of these, a lot of species. For example, bears, um, they it's you know believe that they know their time of death when they they go to ill. They want to go off to be alone. They'll find some fallen timber. They'll go off into a deep cave somewhere or den and die off, live off the rest of their days and die off. Um, you know, it's believed that the same thing could be happening with Sasquatch. Also, again, if we're going to compare Sasquatch to our primates, it has been observed on a very rare occasion. That primates have known have been known to bury their dead. Other animal species have have done this, where tree limbs and uh, branches and whatever else is you know been laid across. Um, some people think that Bigfoot actually buries up, uh, digs a hole, and actually buries completely. I don't know about all that. But at, you know, at, but, to kind of uh, confirm what one of the theories that you stated that uh, for one of the reasons why I what her, I heard it doesn't necessarily relate to Bigfoot, but it confirms what one of the things you said is that the reason why you don't see that many uh, animal bodies, if you will, in the deep woods, i.e., deer, wolves, uh, uh, oh, bear, yeah. what have you, is because the environment is so quick to decay things over a period of time and plus with uh, an area that has large amounts of uh, tree fall um, tree fall meaning leaves or dead limbs uh, or whatever it would cover up that decaying remains that by the time you walk by if you are walking by you wouldn't notice it whatever anyway so yeah, I tell you, you're absolutely right. What you just brought up is what I call, I never heard anyone else call this. I came up with this. If somebody else did, cool. I call it nature's blanket. You know, you talk about the leaf and the pine litter, everything over over the seasons, the ground gets recovered. And, and actually natural growth of moss and everything else will start growing. Uh, earth and nature will take over the, the remains of uh, any bones that are left over. Um, 
and then not to mention, don't forget about the other little creatures and mammals, mice and other rodents, uh, you know, that will take and uh, scatter the bones, you know. Um, and that's another thing a lot of people fail to remember or realize that, you know, bones will get gnawed at, e eaten away from the marrow and, there, and so forth. So, so yeah, there's a lot of different factors that we can relate to uh, the disappearance or the non of non-existent of of you know Sasquatch bones. Um, yeah, we come across. I come across a lot of deer bones. I come across other little uh, mammals and stuff. Um, I tell you, a very rare thing to ever come across is like I mentioned earlier about the remains of a dead bear that's died of natural causes. I've been deep in the woods. I found the bear skull, I, and that's like to me that was a very um, awesome achievement. I mean, I, I got that on my mantle right now. <laughs> um, to me, that's saying that I'm pretty observant out there. If there's a, if there's a dead body of a Sasquatch out in the open or somewhere out there, hopefully I'll find it. <laughs> you know, because I like to believe I'm very observant. So, um, but uh, the other factor is too, and I, I don't want to get into this too. It's too drawn out. But if Sasquatch, and this is to entertain the thought of Sasquatch being a primate of some sort, which I, for the record, I believe Sasquatch is a primate of its own species, just waiting to be discovered. It's unclassified. But if we are comparing Sasquatch, which I do in a number of cases, is make a comparison to our known non-human primates like gorillas, chimpanzees, uh, you know, so forth, bonobos, there's... Are a non-human primate, their bones are, are totally different than a human. Okay? And a lot of people don't realize this. But in a forest, when one dies off, in a forest where the soil is, contains a high level of acid, you know, because there's a lot like the rainforest, the jungles, they have a high acidic level uh, in their soil. And what's this due to the primate bones? It pretty much uh, it decomposes the bones. It it does not preserve the bones. It'll actually break the bones down into dust faster than any other species. Um, so people got to understand primate bones do not last long at all. And so that's the possibility. Why one thing I tried to raise that theory up to human, you know, the other people. I was like, could Sasquatch be? Like our primates, could their bone, uh, could their bone structure be as equal to our known non-human primates? For uh, for a sec, Daniel, if, if you don't mind me taking off my uh, skeptic hat uh, for a moment and replacing it with a tin foil one for the sake of uh, humor uh, and <laughs> for the sake of fun and humor. Uh, uh -huh. Again, this is a tinfoil hat theory. Uh, I'm going to go out on a limb. Uh, what if some of the re crazier reports out there of uh, some of the other... I I'm not saying you or, or anybody in your field is a weirdo. I'm talking about the other people out there. Um, the other folks that might say, Hey, I discovered a set of uh, bones of a undisclosed giant. And they're, they're, these are giant bones. Could these mythical giants be Bigfoot in a way? Again, tinfoil hat theory. <laughs> All right. No, I see I see exactly where you're coming from. Uh, that's a good question. All right. Well, that raises two other questions. Oh, well, one in particular, you need to ask yourself the belief. What's your belief in Sasquatch? Is he? A lot of people think he is human. Then again, Let's go back to the book of Genesis in the Bible, if you don't mind me bringing a religion into this. Um, a lot of people believe the Bigfoot's a descendant of the Nephilim. <sighs> you know, and I, I I try not to really get into this too much, but I do believe people are using the Nephilim, which, uh, which were known as giants, but I, I, I want to be careful without having my notes in front of me on this one, but I do. <laughs> Sorry be, to put I do, you on the spot like that. Oh but. no, no, it's actually pretty good. I, I, I'll be honest. I do like covering this subject, but um, I want to be careful because it's <laughs> my notes speak very clear for what I want to say. But I'm going to try my best to do this without my notes. Um, but a lot of people misinterpret biblical verses biblical scriptures when there's different phrases because in the book of genesis where people use nephilim or the giants 
trying to break it down. And a lot of people have their theory on this. I don't. People misinterpret things. People believe that um, that angels took human women and had children with them, and they were the descendants of Bigfoot. No. <laughs> the Bible clearly says that angels do not give, you know, when we die and go to heaven, we are we are to become like the angels that we know are given in marriage, et cetera, et cetera. We don't marry or, or have relations with women. So that's where people are using that. And plus the, the, the term or the phrase sons of God, they're using that as angels. Well, yes, it does refer to angels in some scriptures throughout the Bible, but the other 90% of the scriptures that that term sons of God refers to Christian men and women. So, and the Nephilim, they're, you know, people are twisting and combining other scriptures with this and coming up with this theory They, you know, uh, you know, they're to me, they got to stop. <laughs> no, um, it's, I know it's a touchy subject, but they got to read, especially how everything is paraphrased in that, in that first chapter of Genesis six. So, but so, in my opinion, is you know that you know you ask about the giants and you know right. uh, yeah, as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's a, a tinfoil hat theory, and it it, it might be a, a logical theory that hey, someone goes out there looking for quote unquote giants, and they find a set a of giant bones or a bones of a giant, and as we you have told, these are creatures that are maybe between. 12 or at least eight plus feet tall uh that can be classified in some way as a giant it all depends on making sure the bones that are found are one legit two fit the description of what might be a bigfoot yeah well we have you know we have like the i began to bring up the bible the bible is you know even with well, with a lot of what the Bible speaks about, we actually have proof of a lot of things that back and support the Bible. Uh, for example, there's been several scriptures in the Bible speaking about giants, uh, human human giants. Uh, for example, actually Goliath was considered to be one of them. You know, but um, you know where it says you know for those who are familiar with the different uh, characters of the Bible, Joshua and his army traveled through the land of the giants and exactly what that was referring to um and there's other scriptures that it was referring to giant other giant people um so yeah giants were you know from the book of genesis giants were in the earth in those days and thereafter as it quotes so yeah so human giants did exist so in my opinion i, I, I believe human giants are separate from a sasquatch type giant I might technically, add as well, uh, I don't know if you could back me up on this, but I've heard that uh, it's not just, I'm, I'm going to say it like this, uh, even though we were kind of touching on it, it's not just uh, Christian religion that has um, quote-unquote giants in them. Uh, isn't there rumors that uh, Bigfoots have appeared in like Native American folklore as well? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and when it comes to Native Americans... Um, well, we can date back again. There's a long history of uh, Bigfoot creatures, Bigfoot documentations. Um, there's a brief, di uh, brief um, description of Leif Erikson back in 900. I forget the exact date. Um, uh, give or take 50 years. Let's put it like that. Yeah. So 980 AD, uh, basically, give around that. I think it was 989 AD, where when he landed here on uh, on the coast of the United States. Um, he encountered some gr you know, you know, gr gruesome looking creatures. Um, so, but Native Americans themselves, um, they have wall drawings, you know, of every known species, you know, of animal that existed. They have one that's described, or you know, as we know as the big hairy man. So, now one thing I will tell you uh, that I've learned from a really good friend of mine. Um, and, you know, he's had passed down information um, that, you know, of knowledge of different things over the years passed down to him. And I, I'm glad to know this guy. And he's, again, he's Native American. And, um, well, you know, anyway, for one thing, keep in mind, Native Americans, as he stated, Native Americans love their folklore. 
um, folklore and being stories of, you know, a lot of times, a lot of the stories are just stories. Now, on the other hand, there is, you know, recognition where uh, Native Americans had encountered, you know, these beings. And some looked at them in a very spiritual sense. Some looked them at them as an evil sense, you know, where it could they could have been meant for evil uh, or guardians of the afterlife. And, and, you know, there's all kinds of different weird, you know, speculation on them when it comes to Native Americans. And also some of them looked at them as the, uh, the, the big brother or guardian of the forest, you know. Um, and I love the way my bu uh, buddy Baltimore puts it because there's a name that was given that's referred to Sasquatch um, there's a Spanish term I'm not even going to even try to remember to guess it but it's Spanish meaning um, shadow people or the shadow man uh, of the forest or shadow of the forest that's what it was so because um, you know they blend in they, they hide so easily and um, they could be we could, they could be watching us all the time when we go in the woods but uh, yeah, Native Americans uh, they do um, recognize the Sasquatch very much, um, and a lot of them, different tribes, different you know ones all throughout the country looked at them in a different sense. Some believe that they, they were, uh, like I said, could have been cannibalistic. Um, so, but as far as the, you know, there's not much history when it comes to Sasquatch and Native Americans. Um, I will tell you this way: there's people out there that will make up stories to tell you <laughs> to, to fit their, to fit their uh, self, you know, pleasures and you know to make it sound in, in pleasing to the ear. But, but if you do I enough did, digging and research, you'll be surprised what little bit there is about Sasquatch and Native Americans. But now, over uh, to kind of correlate with what you were saying, uh, it brings up the memory again to. Uh, kind of bring in a coast to coast am to this because uh uh the main host i don't know if he's still the host and that's george nori and when he was uh he brought up the statement in regards to the call-in lines he says there's usually three type of people if not four type of people that call in one uh is the type of person that something odd and strange actually happened to to them uh, whether it's a, a, a UFO sighting a Bigfoot something paranormal uh, the second type of per person is the person that uh, might actually be on something uh, meaning they're doing illicit drugs and that's what they're seeing um, the third type of person is someone that might have a mental disorder I'm not personally I'm not uh, putting those folks down but it that's what why they're calling in they 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 think they're seeing but something is off on them it's not diagnosed yet um and the fourth type of person is the not so much the hoaxer but somebody that wants attention right. and they're making something up so they could get either a get attention or want to some way somehow fit in right yeah this i can tell you right now i know people like that <laughs> <laughs> people that just want to fit in and and want the attention at the same time um well you know the thing is and this goes out to you know any skeptic non-believer um first of all there's a history there's reports in histories dating over 100 years plus and that's just from out of the united states alone that doesn't include the reports and sightings in other countries um you know we live in a country with a government that wants to keep secrets. We're in a country, and a lot of people don't want to hear this, and I don't care, but a lot of people, you don't understand. We live in a society where we're programmed to how the government wants our system to program us. Looking for Asia, for example. Asia, yeah. they're highly intelligent people. Um, Asia, they're, they're advanced in so many ways. Asia, they have the Yeti. Uh, China, they have their urine appendix. There's all these other Bigfoot type okay, related um, species over there, and the government acknowledges uh, them. Daniel and opens it. Yeah, I, I don't mean to uh, 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 interrupt you. I just want to let you know. You, there's times that it comes in like you're uh, st either a staticky or b breaking up. Uh, I, I'm just going to try to keep you on and uh, have you chat about what you're trying to talk about. I just okay. want to let you know. Oh, okay. I must have. All right. I hate this wire. I got to get me a new headset. <laughs> yeah, so, you're not the first I, one I to tell me that. I just wanted to let you know. 
You, okay, you're still no. coming in fun and dandy. It's just that I want to let you know it sounds like uh, a little bit staticky. That's it. Gotcha. I got gotcha. you. Okay. I appreciate that. But yeah, like I was saying, we have all these other countries, mainly I'm using Asia, for example. Right. That their government proudly acknowledges it, welcomes the research of it. Our government says, no, it doesn't exist. Our local governments are uh, are game and inland fishery guys. Some of them do believe in it, but on the other hand, it's all a joke to everybody. And, and it's going to continue to be a joke to a lot of people. Um, because people today, because, again, the way we're programmed, from growing up from a young society, we're trained the way society wants us to be trained. And we're, we're made to think one way. And I'm not th- saying let's think outside the box. I mean, yeah, we need to have an open mind because yeah. you need to consider, look at all the other species that are being discovered, mainly primates. Yeah, uh, Primates th- th- are being discovered was, all the time. Again, don't mean to interrupt. There was, a, I think, a, a, a species of either deer or antelope that was discovered a, uh, uh, a few uh, years ago. And um, that's one. And the second thing is I want to ask you uh, – if you know or not, has the uh, uh, reports of Bigfoot sightings come grown over the past couple of years or the past uh, 10, 15 years due to the fact that, again, as stated pr- prior, we we are a digital age now. We have cameras. We have uh, s- smartphones <laughs> in a way. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Yeah, I, have, I, I will say this. Yes, the... Uh, the awareness of Bigfoot is grown either by what we do, because there's more and more. There's people that do what I do that are afraid to get out and talk to the skeptic. I'll tell you what, if you ever paid attention, we got all these Bigfoot people that do research. I myself. And I started noticing that, okay, big, this guy got invited to speak at this Bigfoot conference. This guy got invited to speak at this Bigfoot conference. All you're talking to is people who already believe that's not getting us nowhere i'm not afraid i've been ridiculed i've been mocked at and everything else (laughs) so what i'm growing up over that that's childish you know i'm not afraid to speak to the non-believer and and show them i do i have presentations put together with real scientific facts that will you know reveal I mean, for that's, a, why, for a that's big one of the reasons why it's not because, and we'll get into it in, in a moment. Uh, it's not because we're going to be covering your event this upcoming. I think it's it's in June, but I, I want to speak to you about uh, and discuss with you in regards to uh, Bigfoot and it being uh, this mysterious creature. And I didn't want to come off as being that type of person that was, you know put you on that spot and uh put you down in any way shape or form oh no 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 yeah i'm, I'm not taking you as uh offensive at all i just uh, what the point i was i was just trying to make is a lot of people involved doing what i do they they they're preaching to people that already believe and and to me that don't make no sense i mean i believe in spreading awareness to pu- uh, to educate the public at least in awareness um because i can't preach and, 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 you know, with facts related to Bigfoot, because until we have a species, uh, a specimen to actually study and examine um, and to physically observe, like, you know, unlike Jane Goodall or Ian Redmond, they're, they're conservationists and pri- the real primatologists who actually get get in the field and actually have physical contact observations about 10 feet and, and sometimes interaction by holding these primates, gorillas and chimpanzees. They, they're the ones doing the real habituating, and that's how you know. Until we're able to do that, uh, and, and and you know, and have a I, you know, a lot of people don't want to believe this, but yeah, we do need a body put on a slab. A lot of people talk about, oh no, we can't kill them. They got to be a rare species. We got to protect them. I said, yeah, that's I believe that because, and I believe that's part of why our government is so um, you know so quiet about a lot of things. Is because if a species like Sasquatch was ever uh, discovered to the public and uh, known across our country, think about the possibilities of what could happen. Example, back in 1981, we had a spotted owl that was only about 9, 10 inches tall. When that little bird got discovered, 
and was declared an endangered species, all the logging industry shut down. Everything came to a crash. The economy started going, dropping downhill, all because of one little bird. So, if it becomes known, if it becomes a known subject uh, to the public across the country that a hairy hominid, a uh, humanoid beast, or whatever we classify it as, roaming our forests here in North America, that's going to really put a damper on a lot of it's going to affect the, um, our country in a, in a lot of ways is the other thing is it's going to cost it's going to create a public chaos um you know because it, it's going to make other effects like people not going to want to people going to become scared and, and crazy psychotic and not want to go into the woods and camp and spend money to go a part, be a part of these parks and wrecks anymore there's, there's a lot of little things that we th if you think about it that explains why things are going to be kept on a down low. Things right, right. Cl cl close off to the public. <laughs> uh, just two brief things, because one, uh, our regular listener, listeners know that we have topic ADD on this show. Uh, ooh, look, squirrel. Uh, but uh, to kind of correlate with what you were saying and the previous topic in reference to keeping Bigfoot on, on a down low, I will put this in context, because, we again, we live in a digital age. A lot of things... When wind up, especially on the internet, oh, st stuff's not true on the internet. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Um, and I'm not saying what you do again doing is false or anything like that, but I'm just saying sometimes what's presented on the internet can be false. And yes. this is before I, I knew of you or your organization or your event that again you're putting on at, in a few months is that, um, when Mount St. Helens blew, uh, close, I want to say going on 40 years ago, uh, because it was like, what, 1980 or something like that, give or, give or take? Yeah, that uh, sounds about right. So, uh, and some reports have come out saying that uh, they did find some Sasquatch uh, bodies in this, uh, in in when clearing up the mess uh again i don't know if this was a what's known as a creepy pasta sort of deal which is a, basically a scary campfire tale uh, yeah or the fact that it was made just a general uh tall tale if you will uh pun possibly intended uh, in regards to yes while they were cleaning up mess they found these strange large charred bodies they could have been bigfoot but they kept everything in a hush hush because they didn't want the aspect of these large information of these large creatures getting out right so, i do i think i do recall some of that information yeah uh where i believe there was one oh, back when oh back when the uh, there was wildfires uh right. where there was uh, a helicopter supposedly hauling the body out of there you know, um, I think yeah. that was one of the tales I heard too. Okay, yeah, it may have been related to that, uh, but there was wildfires out there in uh, Northern California year, uh, some years back, where there was, yeah, there was a story. Yeah, like I said, I, you know, um, like I said, it was some kind of helicopter. Uh, you know, it had it had something hanging, and there was supposedly the, uh, the alleged body of a Bigfoot being carried out there. Uh, one of the other ones was firefighters carried out uh, on stretcher uh, a, a supposed body as well. Now those things there, we don't. I don't think we ever. Nothing was ever really said too much about that. Like, um, like I said, I, it's kind of hard with stuff like that. That's uh, second hand, third hand, or uh, I knew in essence the uh, urban legend or the tall tale of I heard it from a guy or a guy or uh, a, a buddy of mine on on the. Uh, uh, Fire, who's a firefighter, said he saw this uh, helicopter take out a very large body. Uh, it, again, it goes back to what we said that it could be somebody trying to gain attention or trying to fit in. So right. it's kind of hard to prove that type of tale. You're right. It is. You're absolutely right. It is when, uh, and that's the thing. Without you know, if that information was. Class became classified because you know who knows who got involved. Um, you know, at the FBI and other agencies, and what a lot of us refer to the the MIBs, yeah. <laughs> the Men in Black. Um, yeah, they're basically, uh, you know, basically telling you to shut up. You didn't see what you said you saw. You know, people do this. The uh, the authorities do the same thing 
when it comes to mountain lions and cougars here in Virginia. Um, there's public blogs. I have one myself because I've gathered p- reports about black panthers and cougars. I've seen one back in 2015 uh, across the road in my in my research area because it's all part of the National Forest. I've seen tracks, and then I end up seeing one across the road. I mean, people in surrounding counties have seen them, you know, just like uh, I know they're in West Virginia. I know they're, you know, people have reported seeing them in the surrounding states. So, but one guy here local reported to me, I said, he's seen two of them run across his farm field. And he reported to the game and then the fisheries. <laughs> he says, you didn't see them. That ain't what they what you said, what you saw. So, I mean, why don't they want them to be known? They do exist here. I mean, yeah. there's... So <laughs> I, I could so. kind of correlate with that is because uh, what we, me and my co-host talked about la- in last week's episode is that um, he said uh, he was, again, it kind of relates to what we're talking in ha- hand. Uh, he said uh, where he's he was parked at because he, he called in through Skype. He said uh, he, he looks out to a graveyard and he said, uh, I s- just saw a what appeared to be a shadow walk uh, behind one of the graves. And he said, let me just date this. And he said, I don't think it was something out of the paranormal because it's near the woods and a, a black bear could have wandered out and yep. wandered through the uh, 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 cemetery. And I said, well, that sounds a little bit improbable. And he said, well, it has happened in uh, a couple of times where he lives and he lives in the Winchester area. So, and what oh, yeah. I was told, he, and we got into that discussion. I said, one of the things that I was told by my neighbor, and I kind of just chuckled it off like, yeah, right, because he said uh, he was taking his dog out for a walk uh, one evening, and he said he heard what sounded like a, a cougar in, in, uh, nearby, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure. You know, I kind of dismissed it because I'm less than a tenth of a mile from da- the downtown area of where I live at. And it's like, yeah, like a cougar is going to, or any type of large ca- that size is going to wander around uh, this close to the downtown area. And but I've also told my uh, my co-host that even though I have the mm-hmm. usual uh, in town West Virginia critters, i.e., uh, a groundhog, a raccoon, yes, I have a rabbit, uh, which I've dubbed dubbed hazel uh i did spot recently a a, i want to say a fairly young deer uh in my yard and i was surprised kind of surprised to see that so oh yeah uh for example in other graveyards uh cemeteries there are certain ones i've actually actually took the time to actually walk through them and um I've seen deer deer bed down in a graveyard if they're you know they're bordered by a, a, a tree line a forest. Um, yeah, I've seen deer tracks, big deer tracks, and again, not to mention, uh, you know, like I said, uh, I've seen deer bedded down around inside the cemeteries. So <laughs> why, yeah, why rule out any other animal? You know, um, so. Um, yeah, so it's interesting. Yeah, because like, you talking about Winchester, Winchester, Virginia, right? Yeah, yeah. Because I got uh, I I travel up there a lot with my job. I I drive well, I drive all over the state here. But uh, sometimes I go into West Virginia myself. Uh, depending on where I gotta go, I got a buddy man that lives up there, and um, he's well, he lives around uh, what's it Harper's Ferry, you know, yeah. bordering you know area. So you know, but yeah, yeah. There's uh he talks about seeing he he knows they're up there. He said he's seen them on off his own property where he camps a lot. You know. Uh, uh, so, j- just to be clear, are we talking about your atypical uh, forest critter, or are we talking about uh, a Sasquatch? Well, actually, your forest critter. I'm referring to well, actually, both. To be honest with you, if you <laughs> want to be honest, uh, yeah, because both as far as the, the elusive mountain lion, cougar, or whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, my buddy Ricky Phillips, uh, who lives in West Virginia, uh, he's actually sent me tracks that he's found on his own property. Uh, uh, cool. Uh, yeah. Now. I also have another uh, a buddy of mine who was a speaker at my uh, event last year. Um, he is a professor at uh, Mount St. Mary's uh, University. Um, and uh, he's uh, up around the Harper's Ferry area where he had spotted tracks along the uh, the riverbed 
uh, I believe I want to say it was part of the James River. So, uh, to uh, I think that's a good segue. Tell uh, tell us about this uh, event that's coming up in a, a couple of months. That uh, uh, what's it titled again? Uh, this is, well, this will be our second annual ECBRO okay. Virginia Bigfoot Conference. Um, man, I'll tell you what, it's going to be a lot of fun. We've had between three and 400 people show up at our first event last year. And um, we're going to have a number of different uh, events taking place here. At this time, we originally were going to have a two-day event. We, only, we narrowed it down just to a one-day event for the very fact that uh, the day before and... Uh, we're going to have uh, a night investigation. We got a VIP dinner. Um, also, um, the after the, the uh, conference, we have a week long camping expedition. So that's going to be interesting. Um, but you know, as far as the event goes, uh, it's happening June 29th in Waynesboro, Virginia. Um, all your details, your lo- uh, the final location, um, and buy your tickets. Uh, you could go to our website. We have an official website. It's the uh, Virginia Bigfoot Con dot com. Because um, for all attendees, um, you could uh, we're actually having it at the Best Western Inn Plus Conference Center. Uh, we do have uh, discounts for the uh, for the attendees. So if you want to book uh, book your stay um, at our at our venue, uh, there is a um, they do have a block set up for a discount for the yeah, ECBRO uh, Bigfoot event. I'll ask this on the air. Uh, if you don't mind, send me, uh, as I do with all mo- all my guests, uh, send me the links on uh, Messenger uh, at okay. least sometime after the show. That way I can include them in the show description. So if people want to uh, find the link, it's easier for them to find it on our show description than you know playing back a, a five-second clip just in case. Oh yeah, absolutely. I'll be um, I will be glad to do that. Absolutely, because um, yeah, our, our events are very social. Of course, um, we have a lot of everybody will have the opportunity opportunity to interact with uh, our guest speakers because uh, we have several guest speakers lined up, and uh, we're gonna have raffles, uh, um, food and drink, and uh, we also have from out of us. Uh, Roanoke, Virginia. Um, we have Chaos Mountain Brewing Company. Uh, of course, you're going to be 21 or older, but um, we will be having Squatch Ale served. It's a very strong ale, so I'll just give you a heads up on that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, um, so yeah, we have a lot going on. Uh, there will be a Q&A session after all the speakers are present. Uh, where again, you'll have a second chance. You'll have an opportunity to ask questions to all the speakers. Um, my lineup of speakers, and, and I did this last year, because um, what I do when I when I choose my speakers, I, I choose um, a lot of boots on the ground uh, researchers who get out there in the field, um, and all all these individuals, one way or another, at some point have experienced something. Uh, so they'll be able to share their experiences as well and uh, for those who want to attend the event that may have experienced something or seen something um one of our sponsors that will be there and uh he will be uh he will actually have a table set up where people will have a chance to um actually submit the reports to him and perhaps uh sign up to have a an interview with him he likes to do um he likes to share bigfoot stories on his uh on his podcast so um so there'll be plenty of ways to interact with people left and right and um, i'm sure we'll we'll cover it the best way we can and uh we will for, for the most part try to behave ourselves so <laughs> i mean that in the kindest of ways we we do not cause any type <laughs> of ru- uh negativity we when we go to a show we try to have fun we do not cause any ill will or bad ruckus so well, uh, one of the people, um, actually, uh, one of the people that will be attending, uh, as you know, Mr. Matt Burns, uh, the movie film producer, Matt Burns. Yes. Now he, he was originally coming there because we were originally booked on speakers, and uh, he was just originally coming to set up 
up a table to sell his movies. Uh, and he was going to do a sharing. He was going to have a TV screen set up at his table. However, he will actually be given an official presentation there now. Um, so, and we'll actually share. Uh, we will be showing his movie on the uh, on a big uh, um, screen on the wall. So, um, so that's something else to look forward to. Um, now we may have another addition to speakers. I'm waiting on confirmation um, from one other. So, but we have, uh, like I said, we have yeah, several guest speakers. Yeah, you don't have to mention it to yet. Uh, I think uh, I don't have to remind my listeners that uh, when a convention is or a show is this far out, uh, all guests and speakers uh, are subject to to change, or should I say, the card is subject to change. So please please be aware of that and do not hold uh, Daniel to a lot of things. I, I I say that to as a disclaimer for Daniel because between now and then things do change for a lot of people. Yes, indeed. Thank you for clarifying that. You're absolutely right. Because <laughs> I know we've had so much change before everything got set in stone, almost up to the last minute. Uh, but it worked out so great. We had a lot of positive feedback from our last event. Um, and then I know there's people after our event, we've had people had blogs and everything posted on their different websites. Um, and, you know, we had one person um state that our event was better than the ohio bigfoot conference which has been going on for over 30 years and uh they do put on a very phenomenal event up there i've been there it was a couple years ago i was up there and um they put on a real great event and they usually have the uh, some big top names up there uh attend their event and again my um, you know our event we have you know, our speakers they are known in the bigfoot community uh however uh these are people that have a lot of experience on boots on the ground. That's why I chose these guys. And um, so, you know, they come from different walks of life, different points of views. Uh, I try not to bring everybody. There's a lot of these Bigfoot conferences that take place throughout our country. Um, you know, a lot of them share and they, they end up bringing back the same people year after year to really share the same thing. And I want to, I don't like that. I want to mix it up. You know, I said people need to see and learn about different experiences, different views. So that's why I threw a little bit of, you know, what people refer to as the woo. I throw a little bit of that in there. I don't believe with a lot of what they call the woo, you know, the far fetched kind of thing. Um, but, you know, I let people throw out there. I let, you know, people need to draw their own conclusions, you know, because um, I, I try to keep an open mind on a lot of different topics, but. Yeah, um, I, I do. I mean, again, I do want to thank you for uh, uh, allowing us to cover the event, uh, and uh, I, I say this with uh, all humor and kindness. Uh, it allowing us to fulfill almost the uh, uh, trifecta uh, of possible weirdness. Uh, meaning, I, I again, like I said, I say that with kindness is because last year. Uh, we got to, as a show standpoint, we got to cover uh, a local Paracon, and it was concerning more so the parent, even though Bigfoot and cryptids were discussed lightly, it was primarily ghosts and yeah. that type of paranormal. Uh, now I kidded with my co host saying this year we get to uh, cover primarily Bigfoot and, in essence, cryptids in a way. Uh, right. What can be next? Aliens? So, uh, again, I mean that with all due respect and humor because it's like, okay, first we covered ghosts. Now we cover, you know, something a little bit more living. Now where are we going to go from here? Space. Yeah, right. So, um, yeah, I, have, I highly recommend everybody that hears this come on out. You know, you're yeah. not going to want to miss this. It'll be very informative. You might actually learn something. You might become a believer. You know, um, if you're a camper, man, come on out. Uh, the, the camping exhibition that follows our event is free. Um, I will be doing an online uh, uh, event set up like, uh, for that. Because, uh, like I said, as far as the website for our event, we have that. We have an official Facebook page as well, which I'll make sure I get that to you as well. Um, because all that information, um, there's, way, there's more than ways to find it our booking information for the hotel and the tickets um but uh, i will set up an uh, event for the, you know to try to get a rough um attendance for the camping so you'll see an online uh camping uh event set up too for that so uh 
just for the sake of everything, and uh, before we kind of uh, close, because <coughs> I think we already had a great discussion about Bigfoot. Um, can can you tell us about the this organization that you're the key founder of the E uh, was the E C R O uh, the E C B R O which are the yeah the E <laughs> it's okay and I, and I got it right the first time <laughs> yeah you did you did <laughs> um, so. yeah no that's okay uh, yeah the E C B R O uh, which uh, the were the East Coast Bigfoot Researchers Organization. Uh, how long well, has this uh, organization been around? Well, uh, before I got involved on social media, I was basically, you know, the ECBRO wasn't officially existing. Uh, I was pretty, pretty much very independent, which I, I basically I still am today. However, um, ECBRO team members and everything had actually ended up grown over the years, along with supporters and other representatives in other locations. Um, but... I didn't start the ECBRO until I got uh, after I've been on social media, uh, which the ECBRO became established in a uh, 2011, and um, and then you know then I ended up creating the Facebook group, um, you know, just to share information on, and then I actually have an ECBRO fan page. I have a fan page for myself, which is uh, listed under my name, Daniel Benoit, B E N O I T. But um, tell you what, over the years, after sharing research and sharing all all my information um i've had a lot of uh, supporters and members uh that's grown over the years uh i have a co-founder uh, mr tracy arnold out of southwest virginia he's actually the founder of his group the um, new river valley bigfoot research organization and uh which they are a sub a group of us um we have members uh that support us up in canada out in the midwest um you know we have people that support us all over i actually did you know a roll call on for you know the, those who support us and we're actually recognized uh, surprisingly all across the country um uh, the uk you know ireland um australia i know i keep in touch with people in australia who support us and um so uh amazingly one of our one of our friends of my uh, a friend of mine down in australia a uh, young lady by the name of Bianca. She'll actually be doing the narration to a Bigfoot documentary film that uh, that's coming up here um, this uh, this spring, and I hope to have the film completed, and I'll be able to have copies uh, for sale at the conference itself. Um, so yeah, that's another uh, project that I got going on. Uh, is a film documentary. Um, the name of it will be called The Elusive: Seeking the Unknown. So, and, yes. Uh, as you said, the e, uh, ECBRO has uh, various uh, YouTube, not YouTube, uh, it does have a YouTube channel. Uh, yep. I'll include that link, uh, I'll link to your channel or that group's channel in, the, again, the show description for all to find, uh, as well as uh, uh, the Facebook social media. So, again, just send. Uh, the the links and I'll, I'll be more than happy to include them with in the show description and I may more than likely I'll include it in our initial uh, at least on Facebook all the uh, detailed links to where to find your stuff absolutely and uh, yeah just one more thing too before right after we get off here um, one of my latest latest field videos will be airing here right at eight o'clock so if you want to feel free to check that out um i'll be on the live chat for you know interacting with whoever's watching it yeah so it, that should be interesting um it's all the footage i put together while i was out there and so after i put the footage together and edited it um like i said i put it up on, i haven't watched the video yet so this will be my first time watching it with everybody <laughs> and folks so. uh, that might be listening to this sometime in the future whether it's later in the week later in the month or later in the year or whenever uh you could always find it on his uh depending on how far in the future you are listening to and if youtube still exists that far in the future you could still probably find that particular video on his youtube channel or at least the group's youtube channel right Absolutely. i just wanted to state that depending on when the the, the folks do listen Okay, great, great, great. So, okay, but yeah, uh, come if, on uh, out to our event la- before we end this particular show. Is there any last words and or places that we could uh, 
well, let's say, without you giving out any private information that we could find you in regards to, or the listeners can find you other, uh, besides the ECROB, if if you want. if you Again, you don't have to release that information. I will never dock somebody or do that personally to you. Oh, no. Nah. Uh, that's fine. Um, yeah, if you have, if you want to reach out to me, contact me. Uh, I will give them my email address, which is ecbro ninety eight at gmail dot com. Um, YouTube channel is Bigfoot Zone with ecbro in parentheses right after that. Uh, feel free to check that out and become a subscriber, and don't forget the little bell icon next to the word subscribe too. That way, you'll get alerted and notified every time I go live or post a new video. Uh, I do try to post daily videos, uh, which I have this new thing is called my squash thought of the day. And that consists of uh, basic information, the thoughts that I come up with that I want to share or discuss. So check that out. Um, yeah, I'm found on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, so all the above, um, Twitter, I haven't been active on that in a while. So, <laughs> um, and so that's uh, that's about does it. So, okay, folks, yeah. uh, uh, and that be the case, I'm going to say this. Stick around for the, our usual after uh, show references and uh, statements, and uh, uh, we'll again see all, a lot of you listeners uh, next week. Uh, and I do thank Daniel Benoit for being on the program. And that is, let me end it right Welcome back, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the conversation I had with Daniel Benoit in regards to his research, Bigfoot, and everything else. Even though he shared his social media with us on air and during the call, or during the call for that matter, you could always send us any questions, comments, and join in the conversation by sending us an email to longcoatmafia at gmail.com or you could send us a direct message on either Twitter or Instagram. The handle's the same. It's Long Coat Mafia. And also that being said, because I'm gonna pair these two off together. Uh, we do you can send us a message on Facebook and our Facebook page is Facebook.com slash the Long Coat Mafia Podcast. While you're there hit that like button because we do put exclusive Facebook video or I should say exclusive videos on Facebook because we got hit on YouTube with a copyright claim. We did take that video down and replace it with a royalty free version of that video. So there are two versions of that video, a royalty free video that's on YouTube and the actual video on Facebook. So uh, one's a uh, Facebook exclusive, another one is a YouTube exclusive. And to find us on YouTube, just search for Long Coat Mafia Podcast, and we'll. It's the first search that's up there. Uh, not to mention, to links to our social me media as well are in the description of this show. And uh, as always, if you are listening on a, a desktop or a laptop type computer and you wish to listen to us on the go, you're able to do so by uh, listening to us on either Apple Podcasts or Google Play uh, Podcasts or music, whichever they, if they transfer it over to uh, Google Play Podcasts. Uh, we are also on Spotify, um, Stitcher Radio, and the Podbean app. I do tend to uh, recommend having us on the pod, or using the Podbean app because there are time at times uh, Google Play and iTunes might screw up if you go that route and the easiest way to uh, uh, listen to the show is the Podbean app but if you are the type of person that is transferring from a mobile device to a uh, laptop or a desktop I do rec uh, we are available on iTunes uh, Stitcher Radio Spotify and our main website, which is thelongcoatmafia.podbean.com. And I do recommend bookmarking our website because just in case iTunes screws up like it tends to do and you're not able to get our episode right away, you're able to not just download your the current episode, you're able to stream it on the website or um, I should say you're able to download it and Listen to it on your player of choice. 
uh, whether it's iTunes or uh, Windows uh, Windows Player or uh, independent MP3 player. Uh, we are also available on where podcasts are found. Uh, that being said, and that's pretty much it. Uh, nothing else to cover other that other than to uh, let you all know to please follow us on Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook, and YouTube because we are trying to uh, be more active on our social media outlets. And also, before I almost forgot, we are trying to stream more on Mixer.com. That's right. We do have a Mixer.com account, and we do stream gaming on that. Our channel is LCMP, and... All the letters are capitalized. Again, links are in the description down below. And I'm going to say that is it. Uh, we'll see you next week, which, according to if Podbean is correct, will be our 200th episode. That's right. We'll be hitting 200 episodes next week. So stay tuned. I, I hope to do something special for our 200th episode. So please stick around, and I'll see you all next week. You've been listening to the Long Coat Mafia Podcast, the Internet's most hated and mafia-themed geek podcast.